Friday. Um, thank you for joining us this morning. Hope you're doing all right as we uh, head into the end of our week. Yeah. Yeah. Let's open our Bibles together this lovely Friday morning. We're going to be reading from uh, Romans chapter 4, verses 1 to 15 this morning. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, discovered in this matter? If, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the man who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. David says the same when he speaks of the blessedness of the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will never count against him. Is this blessedness only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? We have been saying that Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. Under what circumstances was it credited? Was it after he was circumcised or before? It was not after, but before. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. So then, he is the father of all who believe, but have not been circumcised, in order that the righteousness might be credited to them. And he is also the father of the circumcised, who are not who not only are circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had been had before he was circumcised. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be the heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who live by law are heirs, faith has no value and the promise is worthless, because law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Another jam-packed uh, passage today. Yes. It actually picks up on um, a lot of what we were talking about yesterday and what we were kind of unpacking a bit yesterday about mm. righteousness and um, living by faith and things like that. But it, it's um, what it's actually doing is contextualising it for Abraham, mm. isn't it? So Abraham... Um, was a guy who you can find in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, he appears. Um, and God makes him a promise that he will be, um, he, he will he will have kings for descendants and more descendants and he can count more descendants and mm. stars in the sky. Um, and God says that your, to, to Abraham, your family will, will be blessed, but you'll be a blessing to the world as well. Yeah. Um, so he's kind of talked about the father of faith, talked about as the father of faith here, isn't he? Um, because Abraham is the one through whom God kind of used his people um, and Jesus is a descendant of Abraham as well mm. so just a little bit of background there on, yeah. on who this guy is that suddenly <laughs> pops up um, but obviously the, the Jewish people would have known that really really well Abraham mm. is kind of big bucks yes <laughs> yeah it would have been something that, that they were really familiar with that, that kind of everyone in the Jewish community from Kind of from the youngest to the oldest would have would have known about. Yeah. And I think it's it's really really interesting. I think that kind of the argument that Paul makes here is really good, in that he um, for for the Jewish people, circumcision was a um, kind of a, a sign of being part of that that community of God, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a covenant, wasn't it, between yeah. God and His people. Yeah, and that that originated with with Abraham when, um, when God made this promise, this this response was was what Abraham did circumcision. But Paul, Paul kind of makes the makes the point that that these promises that God makes and the salvation that God gives to Abraham, and the the righteousness that we spoke about yesterday that was that was credited to him, that all happened before he was circumcised and um and for people who are who aren't jewish or aren't jewish men even um who who aren't circumcised in that way as part of that covenant 
Paul is saying that whatever's going on with Abraham can apply to Jewish people and to non-Jewish people as well. Um, he doesn't disregard either, does he? He mm. just Paul kind of says, "Well, if you're circumcised, this is this that's relevant. If you're not, this is relevant." Yeah. And kind of says that both can be um, made righteous, both can be justified. It, it comes back to that phrase that he said um, that we looked at yesterday: "For all, for all have sinned." So it's it's back to that for all, and he's highlighting yeah. the importance of. No, no one is left out of this opportunity for a relationship with God and to be brought into this new covenant. Mm. It, is, it is literally there for the taking for anyone. And um, kind of back when this had been written, it was kind of, it was Jews or Gentiles, wasn't it? That's how it was perceived. You were either Jewish or you weren't. Yeah. So that was the whole world, essentially, wasn't it? That was the circumcised people or the uncircumcised people. Yeah. Yes, and... I, I wonder whether that's just a model for for kind of the the vision that the Bible has for every every tribe, every tongue, every ethnicity, every race, every background, every culture to to be able to kind of live kind of harmoniously in as part of the body of Christ. And it's something that's I think often overlooked in, in some of these passages but that might just be really relevant for kind of the cultural moment we're in we're in right now is that kind of god god has positive things to say and salvation to bring to all of us regardless of our kind of background and where we're at i guess one of the um one of the real cruxes of this of this passage um comes fairly near the start actually where it says um if in fact Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. And this theme of whether we're justified, mind right, saved by by works, which is or, what we do, which is yeah, you know, w- perhaps it can go a bit too far and say that we we can justify ourselves in what we do, mm. and that's what Paul is writing here, um, and say if if Abraham had managed to justify himself in what he did then he could have boasted about that, but that wouldn't have been something that God would have had the glory for. That mm. was Abraham just doing it on his own. Yeah. Yeah, but then Paul, that's Paul saying that wasn't the case, yeah. was it? In fact, it, he says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And so the righteousness came because God credited it, gave it, gifted it to Abraham. And, and kind of, Whatever, whatever you say about salvation, the one thing we can be sure is it comes from God. It is up to God through what he has done for us in Jesus. Yeah. And that little, um, that little bit there, Abraham believed God and it's credited him as righteousness. That is a direct quote from the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis. Mm. And um, actually, what's really encouraging is that Paul is using that as an example of how God made Abraham righteous but actually if you read a bit further on in Genesis what's happened here is that God has said to Abraham um, and Abraham and his wife Sarah can't have children and God has said to Abraham and Sarah you will have children and you'll have thousands and millions of descendants and Abraham Abraham believed God and that's what that's talking about there but then Abraham goes on like another tens of times to then doubt what God has said. Mm. Um, but God still makes Abraham righteous, even though Abraham comes back time and time again and doubts and questions and questions. Yeah, and how encouraging is that good. for us? Yeah, it's not. We don't need to have a perfect faith, do we? To, we don't. God doesn't kind of give us the, a certain level of righteousness based on whether we doubt a few times or whether we don't. And, and the reality is we all do, don't yeah. we, at times? We all have doubt and our kind of belief wavers yeah. but in that moment Abraham believed and that was enough yeah so it definitely wasn't his works that, that yes, saved him that's it that's who and faith and we'll, we'll hear later in Romans faith is a gift from yeah. God isn't yeah. it brilliant good stuff shall we pray yes finish shall we yeah, yeah. God, thank you for this week. Thank you for all that has gone past, 
for all that's good, all the, the joy and the love and the, the peace and those moments where we've known you close. We thank you and praise you for that. Lord, in the times where we've um, maybe stepped outside of what you'd want for us this week, where things haven't gone so great, we offer that to you. And where, where it's been our fault, Lord, we just ask for your forgiveness. We stand on your grace and your love and your promises. And like Abraham, we, um, we believe in you. We believe your promise of salvation. Lord, we thank you for all of the key workers across the country at the moment. For emergency services, for people working in shops and supermarkets, for teachers, for healthcare professionals. For everyone that's been working non-stop through this time. And we really pray for your blessing over them, that they'll get time to rest as a new normal creeps in, as lockdown begins to end we just thank you for their services and for their work over the past four months thank you that um these people have served the country so so willingly without thought for their own own life and own health really we just pray that you'll bless them bless their families as well and keep them safe we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We've come to another, an, the end of another week yeah. of Weekday Church Online. Um, but the weekend is coming, including on Sunday. We have Sunday Church Online. At 10.30, don't miss that. Yes. And that's going to include something that we're really excited about that you won't want to miss. Yeah, a really exciting announcement about um, some stuff that's coming up over the next few weeks. So don't miss that. Be there for the big announcement. Yeah. 10.30 um, and we will be back here on Monday at quarter past seven. We'll so, see you then. Yeah, have a great weekend. Stay safe. God bless. Bye. Bye.